KD or the association constant is a measure of binding affinity and it does not depend on the concentration but the con the value at which half of something is bound to a partner that can depend on the concentration so we often talk about KD as the concentration of one binding partner at which half the other partner is bound but we're talking about the free concentration not the total concentration so if we're plotting the total concentration then the concentration at which half is bound might not be the actual KD. But if you design your experiments in the proper way, it will be. Um, so this is a confusing kind of nuance. Um, and so today I just wanted to go over this and clarify up some things. Some people had asked me some questions about it the other day. Um, and so it's going to be a more technical post if you want more on KD. Um, I will um, link to some past posts. But today I really just wanted to get into this concept of not depending on the concentrations, as well as the importance of designing your experiments so that you're not in like the titration range and that you even avoid like the intermediate range. The KD. It is basically if you take two molecules, we'll call them A and B, and you mix them together, let them bind, and then you were to go and once they reach equilibrium, so where the rates of the binding and the unbinding have balanced out, so that they might still, you have know, might still have one's binding and one's unbinding it. But for each one that binds is one that unbinds. And so if you were to go and take a snapshot, you would get an idea of how much is bound um, and how much is unbound. And this would be like this ratio that you would get would be constant over time once you've reached that equilibrium. And if we take this ratio where we count, where we um, do the concentration of the free A times the concentration of the free B divided by the AB, the concentration of AB. So we have the concentrations of the unbound multiplied by each other, divided by the concentration of the bound complex. This is the value called the KD. And so it's the inverse of the binding affinity. So you would think like, okay, well, if it's a measure of affinity, so wouldn't that be like bound over unbound? But in that case, you have a unit that's like one over molar or whatever, which isn't very useful. And so we use this KD, which is the molarity or whatever you, molar units you're talking about, like micromolar, nanomolar, um, that sort of thing. And then you, so you have the concentrations of the unbound divided by the concentration of the bound. So what does this mean? So basically, if you have a lot of the unbound, this is going to be big, this is going to be small, you're going to get a big number for your KD. So a higher KD is going to be a lower affinity. If most of it is bound, you're going to have this be really big, this be really small, and now you're going to have a really small KD. And so a lower KD is going to represent a higher affinity, and a higher KD is going to represent a lower affinity. And if we were to graph this on a map, and we're in the right, um, we can see that you can have, the con there's this con going to be a concentration at which half of the partner is bound, if you look in terms of the concentration of the other partner. And this value is going to actually this is going to equal the KD when you are in the right um, binding regime and you're looking at in terms of total A or total B. Um, so let me go into this a little more detail. Um, so why this is, is that you can math it out and I have another post where, you, where I do math it out, but the crucial thing is that this in this KD equation, this A or this B, you can do it in terms of one in terms of the other, either one in terms of the other one. Um, but the concentration of them is this is the free concentrations, the free, free, free. This is not your total concentration. However, when we do an experiment, we're often measuring the total concentration because that's a lot easier to measure how much you put in rather than how much of it is actually free. And so in order to do a binding experiment, we want to make it so that the total is equal to the free. So that if the any amount that's bound is going to be such a tiny fraction of the total that we don't have to worry about the total. Um, it's taking away from that total. And so when we do this, now we can do this by adding a great, great, great excess of one over the other. And so typically often what we're doing is we're doing some kind of experiment where we have a very low concentration of one thing 
So we're able to do this often um, using some sort of experiment with a radio labeled substrate or a fluorescently labeled substrate. And we can use a really low concentration of it so that we can then vary the concentration of the other. And we don't have to be worrying about taking away um, too much of the, too much from that total. And if we're not taking away from the total, then our total is equal to the free. And therefore, when we go, and we go and we measure this, we can take this, what it was this free A concentration and we can put in the total A concentration. And when we do this, we can then calculate the KD as the concentration at which half is bound in those experiments that we're looking at. Now, this does not mean that you're changing the actual KD if you're outside of the range, if you get values that aren't the actual half. So let's look at a couple of instances when this might be different. Um, and so this is a really great article um, from the Herschelag lab of how to measure and evaluate binding affinities. And it's open access on eLife, which means that anybody can read it. Um, so they warn you about a couple things. And so this is the binding regime. This is where you want to be. So here, instead of A and B, they're using R and P. Um, so here they have their R would be the one that they have very little of, and then the P would be the one that they're varying the concentration of. And you can see that when you're in this binding regime where you have this R total be way, way, way below the KD. Um, and so basically what this is saying is that you have a very, very little amount of the one partner and then you're adding a great excess of the other partner. Now what's going to happen? You, because there's so little of the one partner, it's like the other copies of itself don't exist. So it's not like it has to compete very much because there's very, very little of it. It's kind of like, it's not really like this, but if you think back to when we talk about the ideal gas law and how the gas molecules, you can kind of consider them to be independent from one another because they're so far apart. In the case of these molecules, because there's so few of them, it's like they're really far apart and they don't see the other ones and they don't really care about the other one's existence. The other ones aren't really taking away from the pool of the free, um, of the free P, of the free binding partner. And so you can kind of just think in terms of the perspective of that individual molecule, is it seeing something that's, um, is the environment it's in different when there are, um, at the concentration that it is at? So basically, like, if you were to change the concentration of the of the binding partner, so if you're changing the concentration of P, are you really changing what that molecule sees, what that what the R sees. Is it seeing something different? Why would it be seeing something different? It would be seeing something different for a couple of reasons. One would be if the other copies of itself, so if the other copies of the R were taking away um, copies, so if it had like competition, where you're in this titration regime. So now imagine this, you have a lot, a lot, a lot of your R. So here I think they're talking about like a receptor, um, which is why it's um, R. But if you have a lot of it, so now it does have to compete with the other molecules, but it is competing. Um, it's basically because you don't have much of the thing that you're adding, now every time that you add it, you're going to have one snatch it up right away. And when you do this, basically, instead of carry, instead of the measuring the value at which half is bound, when you do that, instead of measuring the actual KD, you're getting a value that's way, way higher. Because what's happening is that when you add a when you add the binding partner, it's going to, anything's just gonna grab it right away. And so it's kind of like first come, first serve. Um, and what's going to happen though, is because you have so much excess of this R that's around to bind, now it's just whoever, they're, it's just gonna sop it up right away. And it's gonna keep sopping it up and keep sopping it up and keep sopping it up until um, it's like full. And so basically the value that you get is going to be way, way higher. So now the concentration at which half is bound is just going to be the concentration, like half the concentration of the amount of the R that you have. Um, because there, remember you have so much R that they're just gonna snatch it up right away. 
And so they're going to snatch it up. They're going to be until they get like all of them get one. And so the concentration at which half of them get one is just going to be half of the active concentration. Um, and so that's another nuance is that sometimes like you, the amount that's total is not actually the amount that's like functional. Um, and so this can be another complication. But so this is the, these are the, this is like an extreme case. And if in this extreme case, the, the data you get is basically useless when you're in this like titration regime where, um, so titration, you might've done like a, um, in like gen chem or something or where you have like an acid base titration and you're putting one thing and like keeping increasing the amount of the other until you see that it like gets to a point. Um, so what's happening here is that as you're increasing the amount of the other, really what you're just finding is the amount of functional um, protein but it's going to scale with the amount that you're adding. When you are doing this, then the data, there's basically no hope in finding that KD because, well, you're just kind of measuring the concentration of the active component as we talked about. But if you are in the intermediate, so if you're in somewhere between this binding and this titration range, now your data might still be useful, but it's going to be more complicated. So what are we talking about? So here, now what's going to happen if we have something intermediate where we have something where say we're under the KD, but not super duper under the KD. And so what's going to happen is that as we add, as we add the component, what's going to like, as we add the binding partner, there is going to be competition and we are going to be reducing the amount of the free binding partner substantially. So we're still a, in both cases, like no matter what case you are, you're, you're, you are depleting the amount of the free. But if the amount of the free is in such great excess over the amount of the, or if the amount of the total is in over such an excess over the amount of the, um, binding partner, then it doesn't matter that you take that little drop out of the bucket. So it doesn't matter. Um, but if you are taking a substantial amount, so now like proportion wise, we're taking a lot more. So we might have the same amount, like the same number of molecules be taken out if we have a lower or a higher concentration of R. But in terms of the proportion of them that is actually taken away from the thing, it's a lot less. So it's like a drop out of a teaspoon versus a drop out of an ocean. So if we have the drop out of the ocean, we're all good. If we have the drop out of a teaspoon, now we have some problems because we're lowering the free concentration. And when we're talking about the KD, we're talking about this property, like this inherent thing about the molecule that's talking about like how much it likes that binding partner. And so it's how much it likes the binding partner, it's not going to depend on how much of the other molecules are around. You can think of the KD, if you think of it more in terms of probabilistic terms, so when you think about it from the molecules point of view, so it's going to, it can bind, when it finds something, it can bind and it can unbind and it can bind and it can unbind. And so whether and how long it binds to, that's going to be like the inherent to how much it likes the thing, how much affinity it has. And how, that's not going to, it's not going to matter how much like other stuff is around it or what else is going on. Um, in terms of other molecules um, binding and unbinding to other copies of it, um, it's just going to care about like how much of it it sees as well as the um, how much it like likes it. And so how much of it it sees is going to depend on that free concentration, but if the free concentration isn't substantially changing, then we don't need to worry about it. But if that free concentration is changing, now we're not changing how much that molecule like wants to bind or unbind, but so we're not going to change that like equilibrium value, but we are going to change the probability that it can bind um, and that it will find a binding partner. And so then we would have to take that into account. This is like a, this idea of like ligand depletion. So ligand's like a binding partner. And when you're kind of taking away that binding partner, you're changing the free concentration. And then you do need to take that into account. Now, there are ways that if you're in that intermediate regime that you can then use like a quadratic formula and like more complicated stuff in order to take into account the, um, the depletion.
Um, and so, especially if you're using some sort of software, then this can help with this. But in that case, you still need to remember that the KD, so the half concentration, the concentration of half is bound. In that case, it would not correspond exactly to your KD, but the KD itself is this fundamental property of the molecule um, and the like buffer and all that stuff. But it's this fundamental, con it's this fundamental um, property of this molecule in the system. And therefore it's not going to change, even though what you are measuring as the half bound concentration is going to change. So when we talk about this half bound concentration, that's really talking about the free concentration. And what we are measuring is often the total concentration. And so if, unless you take that into account, then you can't, um, when you're designing an experiment or when you're analyzing the data, if it wasn't taken account in, when designing the experiment, then that can influence things, but it's not changing the actual inherent KD of the molecule, um, which we can also define in more fundamental terms with like free energy and various things like that, which you really don't care about the concentrations of the things that are around. Okay. And so, yeah, so basically that was that, and I hope that helps and didn't just confuse people more. Um, yeah.